I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. Again, we're still here in St. George, and we are going to be introduced to Jeannie Turpin. Thanks, Jeannie, for coming and sharing your story with us. And it's such a unique story. I'm excited to have you share this with, with everybody. Where were you born? Um, I was born in California, the okay. West San Fernando Valley in yeah. California. Did you live there long? Um, most of my life. I, was, I, I lived all but the last 13 years in California. Oh, um, so you went to high school there mm -hmm. and everything, huh? Mm -hmm. So were you born into an LDS family? I was not. You weren't? What, were, what, were your folks religious at all? They didn't want to cram religion down my throat, our, mine and my brother and sister's throat, so we so didn't you had a really... a sister and a brother mm -hmm. and you, okay. Um, so they didn't really do anything with church. We didn't go to church. Oh. Um, they didn't discourage us so much from going to church, but it just wasn't something we did as a family. But did they were, I think my mom said they were more uh, Methodist. Oh, if anything, they if were anything, Methodist. Yeah. <laughs> did you know Mormons? Had you ever met any? Um, not until I was in high school. Okay. Um, all through, well, actually, I take that back. My neighbors across the street from us were, were Mormons. Were Mormon. And we were really good friends, really close. Yeah. But I never went to their church. Okay. I don't know why, but never went to church with them. Did <laughs> you, you ever play with them on Sunday or anything? Did you ever um, think that they had anything no, unusual? No, or? we didn't. They weren't available on Sunday. Really? You noticed yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, because that's the way my kids were, too. They couldn't go out and play on Sunday. Yeah, they, <laughs> they were not available on Sunday. Oh. So you get into high school and uh, and you met Mormons or, or what there happened? was a there was a lot in I was in the music department mostly, and there were a lot of um, a lot of the people there were Mormon oh. and so I got to talk with them and um, I just kind of fell into going to them. I uh, went to seminary all through high school. You um, did before. School because it wasn't the like early here. The early morning, yep, crack of dawn. Wait a minute, how did this happen? They just invited you, or you? I was just kind of interested in, and oh, um, the guy, the fam, the what, the guy who was my age and, uh, of the family that lived down the street from us, he went in the morning, and so I just asked him, you know, could you take me too? And so we just went. Get a ride to school. Got and a ride to school, and, and the only pay you had to seminary. do was to go to seminary. What, what did you learn? I learned about the Book of Mormon, some things about the Book of Mormon. Um, they didn't talk about the Bible when I was going there, mm. and um, which I thought was kind of different, but it was, I figured it's a Mormon church, so they're going to teach about the Book of Mormon. That sure, just made makes sense. sense yeah. So I, I went all through high school, but I continued attending my church. Um, well, now which church was that? It was called. Um, uh, what was it called? Oh, well, I mean, it was. It's a long name. It's about this long. Kind of a non-denominational church. No, it was. Or? It was a Reformed Presbyterian oh, church. Okay. I think it was the Evangelical Reformed Presbyterian Church of Chatsworth in <laughs> okay. California. That so, is a long name. Yeah, it's the sign <laughs> I'm sure had there's to some double acronym it up. For it. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't use an acronym. So had you been doing that through high school or mm -hmm. your whole life? My whole life. Of, you'd say your whole life you yes. were going to that. I was so well, you, not to that church. I was born again when I was ten. Oh, and, tell us um, about that. That was kind of fun. My uh, one of my friends, we were playing Barbies at her house, and she just we were about ten years old, I think, ten or eleven, and she says, "Do you know where you go if you die today?" And I said, "Well, I think I'm going to heaven." And then she says, "Do you know why you'd be going to heaven?" Or, and then she did the whole little prayer, and right there, playing with Barbies, we said a prayer, and I was saved. And um, 
<laughs> went back to playing Barbies. And she was a precocious little girl, she wasn't was. she? She was very precocious. No, she was and a, I'm very grateful to her. Well, of course, yeah. Well, so what did you sense at, at age 10? I, I'd always wanted to go to church um, my I'm whole sorry, life. I'm sorry, but I meant with the born again experience. Is that what you're saying? Right, okay. right. So mm -hmm. it just made me want to go and learn more and to be closer to God, even though all these years prior to this, mm -hmm. I'd always had this desire like to be closer to God, to be close to God all the time. Okay. So it was just kind of stirred that desire at 10 and never stopped for years, so. That's just amazing. Yeah. Now that you look back on it, do you think that was kind of a miracle or amazing that that you would do that, just playing and all I of a do. sudden it happens? I and, do. And you go on back, back to back playing? Back to playing, <laughs> yeah. I've never heard anybody else talk, have yeah. a have that happen to them. Well, I've wonderful. never heard about but that But you before. certainly sensed a difference in your life and you then started going mm -hmm. to church and even more mm -hmm. and, oh, amazing and did you read the bible then much at all or was that um, part of the when i was 10 that age not so, not much. so much but okay. as i got older i did okay. i read it a lot so then you get into more serious then with the, the um, mormons or, or start hearing their their side of the story so what happens then well uh, one of the things that that the main thing that really grabbed me about the Mormons was the family aspect. My family was kind of falling apart. My my mom wasn't very nice, and my dad was an alcoholic, oh. um, and our family was falling apart. And I would go to church, and I would pray for them every week, and um, we had a prayer service Sunday night, and we'd pray for my parents and my brother and sister every night. Mm. and. Uh, when I was talking with my friends that were Mormon, they were talking about how your family is, how family is so important and then your family could be sealed together for all time and eternity. And I didn't really quite then grasp what that meant until later, yeah. but I thought that was a cool thing and I thought that I could, maybe I should check out that religion as well. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. I never didn't realize that it was any different than more than, than being what, a Christian. Than what you were going that. to, mm -hmm. okay. Except they had a couple of different things and they called each other brother and sister, but <laughs> it was not a big deal. That wasn't too big of a deal. So did you take the missionary lessons? Yes, and we took them twice. My mom went through them once with me. Oh, did she? And um, she says, I think you should wait until you're 18. <laughs> and then I okay. took them again when I was closer to 18. Okay. And that was, I, I, and then you got baptized? I got baptized. She wouldn't let me baptize till I was 18 because okay. I was an adult then. And So the message that you were hearing from the missionaries, do you kind of recall what, what their main message was? Or um, they, That was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> I, I, the, I remember that they had a flannel board uh -huh. and they showed the pictures of of um, I guess it was Jesus and God standing there talking to Joseph Smith. I remember that, and um, that's about it. That's yeah. what when I think back, that's about all that comes but back really, to my mind. Did they have you read the Book of Mormon, or did they present you with one? And I don't remember. Ask you to read it. They probably did. I would think they did. Yeah, probably. But I don't, yeah, I think they did because I think my mom started to read it too, oh. just out of curiosity. Did it influence her at all? No. Okay. Not one way or another, oh, okay. no. But it did you, and you thought with well, maybe this could heal your family, or mm -hmm. at least that my was, family in the future would be That was the biggest, blessed. that maybe my family, yeah. current family, could be healed yeah. or touched or something. I was, yeah. you know, it was so hard to, it was such a hard time to live at that time, so yeah. with so, the family. So did you start going to the Mormon church then, after that? Um, just seminary in the morning. And then I went to my regular church on um, Sunday and Wednesdays. And then after I became 18, right. um, I did, I got baptized started going and started to the going. Mormon church. Mm -hmm. And were you listening to the messages there and were the, how were they comparing to what you'd experienced and what you Very knew? different because oh, really? they were just everybody off the street just walked up there. I mean, they weren't pastors, which is what I was used, used to, to oh, yeah. and these were just 
like me, you know, they were just getting up and talking, getting yeah. up and talking. And I, <laughs> I remember telling <laughs> the bishop, I said, I'm not going to do this. I don't <laughs> talk in front of people, so don't ask me. <laughs> and I guess he respected that. Or <laughs> well, I really wasn't involved that long before um, things that I had thought were true about the church, what they had told me about the church. I found different things. It was almost like they had taken a fishing line and hooked me in, reeled me in. I got baptized, and then they just started telling me all these things. They wouldn't. They told the me the rest of the story. The rest of the story. Yeah, <laughs> they told me not to bring my Bible to church, which I thought was very odd. Um, oh, I've, they yeah, I've said never heard that. But. We. It was California, and oh. the Mormons here that I've talked to. They they think my they church my where I went was kind of off. They don't think it was really Mormon. I said, well, it was, <laughs> but this is what we did. They this told me to teach. keep my Bible at home, um, that I just needed the Book of Mormon and the other books. And yeah. um, uh, if I did bring my Bible, I had a, a NASB version, and they told me that was absolutely not allowed, which Heretical. I thought was funny. <laughs> so you had yeah. to bring a King James Version mm -hmm. if you did bring one? And the only one I could find was my dad's when he was a little boy, and yeah. it was just, I was afraid to turn the pages because the, they so were so thin and the, the <laughs> cover was all, every time I used it, the, the pieces would break all over and everything. But when they started telling me about Jesus and Satan are brothers, I was shocked and I I would always ask them, well, where's that in the Bible? Well, it's not in the Bible. This is, you know, new revelation. And and I thought, well, that's kind of weird. And then um, the, the part that really got me really was when they said that um, God was an exalted man who had walked on this earth. I had never heard that before, um, after before being baptized. And I was like, how can this be? The Bible says God is a spirit and no one has ever seen him and <laughs> he's he's always been. He he's he's always been. He From didn't have a creation. To end. No beginning. Yeah, and no end. he wasn't yeah. created. So how could he have walked on earth and then become walked on his earth uh, probably, yeah. 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 And it, and he's an exalted man and I was like, This isn't right. So I started showing some of my friends in the Bible and it was really so kind your of Mormon friends? my Mormon friends. What did they say? They they thought I was nuts because I, you know, here I am baptized and I was supposed to be, you know, um, getting the testimony of the church and all. Sure. And now I'm coming up with these issues that aren't <laughs> issues to them, but they're big issues to me. And the and they're dismissing me because I'm saying, well, look, it says right here in the Bible, and they weren't believing it because the Bible isn't, they believe the Bible isn't translated correctly. Did you set, get that sense that they, oh, would, they, that they didn't trust the Bible? Me, they told me it, that you isn't can't that trust the Bible. the most surprising thing, really? Yeah. I mean, I believed that for 65 years, that mm -hmm. I couldn't trust the Bible, and uh, now I can. <laughs> and the difference is, is that you actually can trust it, the Dead yes. Sea Scrolls and manuscripts and so on that, that really prove the Bible is... Uh, is the way it's supposed to be, and God's Word, mm -hmm. isn't that amazing? So you, your experiences then in your previous church and reading the Bible and so on really helped you as mm -hmm. you started hearing these other doctrines. Right. Do you think this happens to many people? I, I, I hope. I hope. <laughs> I do. I hope so. That they so. actually sense that there's a difference. I, I, as a Christian, I could not... I, my thought was when I got baptized, that there were so many similarities that there, there surely isn't going to be any big differences where I couldn't be Mormon and Christian at the same time. But they don't mix. Christian and Mormonism does not mix. They, there's too many things. It's a work-based uh, religion, and even the, the, the year and a half that I was there, I felt pressure to be perfect which was sad. Too, really? It was, yeah, it was, I was surprised at that because I knew better, but there was this new expectation now on me from the church that I needed to perform and be better. And, but after I found those 
two facts about Jesus being Satan's brother and God yeah. walking on. And that we could become God. And we could become gods. And I was like, what? I mean, that's actually it's a different just... part of the story compared to God becoming, I mean, a man becoming God, our God, but then the fact that we could become gods. A God of our own planet yeah. later. I just was, why didn't they tell me these things before I got baptized? I was kind of shocked. Well, I just wonder if, um, if Mormons ever really think this through much. I know I didn't, so I'm assuming they don't, because if you think about that, it really is it's so sacrilegious, I mean, to think that we can become God. And I never you, got to that place where I accepted that. Yeah. I, you know, it was, I never got a testimony of the church that they were asking me about, and um, I mean, asking me to have. And yeah. um, I, I had a friend who was on a mission, and I wrote to him, and I told him, <clears throat> excuse me, I told him about the, <laughs> what I found in the Bible, and um, he sent back some letters, and then all of a sudden there was nothing. So I don't know whether he, he was very confused by what I wrote, probably but then I never saw him again. didn't have any answers either. Probably. Yeah, I, I, hope, I hope that maybe I was a help to him and not making him so confused that, you know, he, he either delved more deeply into the church or he just left the church, but I never heard from him ever again, and I kind of felt bad about that. So. Well, so we're, you're probably in your 19, 20 year old mm -hmm. t time frame here, so this mm -hmm. is fairly mature, I think, on your part to, to be able to see these differences and then to say, because I think some people, I can hear myself saying this, well, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll mm. figure this out, I'll learn about it, it'll make sense to me eventually. I can hear myself saying that, but I'm proud of your courage to be able to say, okay, that's not that's not gonna work. Yeah, it was just I couldn't live with those things and um God being a man just it 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 flew in the face of everything that I grew up with and knew and what the Bible said. So and when Joseph Smith you <clears throat> presented that little story about Joseph Smith, we call it the first we, but the church calls it the first vision. Um did, did, did that seem a little strange too? At the it did, kind of, because. Of course, but they then, use the word prophet, so that makes mm -hmm. sense. That's in the Bible and so on. But yeah, they. It, the, I just remember. I kind of remember things that were questionable, but I thought, like you said, maybe yeah. I'd figure <laughs> them out, and it would make sense later. Yeah. The more I delved into yeah. it, it would make sense, and. The way they would talk about <clears throat> uh, getting that um, testimony of the church, um, I just kept thinking, well, back then, before the revelations of the how they believe about God and stuff, I kept thinking, well, maybe it'll just happen, and yeah. and I can I'll understand what it really means. Is it, <laughs> which turned out to be exactly what they said. You know, he believed God was standing there with him and. I Amazing. thought maybe it was just a, a, a vision because you know you yeah. can have a vision of God in your mind, and, well, maybe, and you, I think maybe you put legs on God. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> put in legs your, on this spirit. Yeah. So you uh, <clears throat> then just quit Pardon going, me. and what? Because sometimes converts, <clears throat> especially young uh, young ladies, I would assume, but you had a lot of attention given to you because you were joining the church at this age and. Probably, I would have thought they would have asked you to speak because you, you're encouraging the other people that might be investigating or something. But anyway, they never, they, they never, never did. Oh. They never asked. Well, sometimes um, converts kind of take on a little bit of a role of, 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 you know, being extra special because you've made that decision to join the group. I was very yeah. quiet, so they probably. I used to be very shy, so okay. <laughs> they probably didn't even notice I was there. <laughs> okay. So, but when you left, <clears throat> did your friends say anything, or did you? Um, they wondered why. Um, they told me that um, it was a bad thing that I was leaving, and I said, I just can't do this. I, can't, I have to. The Bible says this, and that's, <laughs> and I believe the Bible, and yeah. I can't be in a church that doesn't believe in the Bible, yeah. too. You know, I mean, maybe it's okay to have the Book of Mormon, but if you're just completely Discounted. discounting <laughs> what the Bible says, yeah. that's just too, I just that's couldn't deal much. with that. 
and um, they kept hounding me for tithe and I they would tell me there were people that would come I think it was the home teachers <coughs> or visiting teachers, visiting teachers. Or, yeah, yeah. they mm -hmm. came a couple of times asking me to explain to them why I don't want to come anymore why I don't want them to come and talk to me anymore and it got to the point where I just I just told them I, I talked to the bishop and I said what can I do I don't want to be bothered anymore I need to be off the rolls huh? yeah. <laughs> and I did I got my name off the rolls during that <coughs> year or two that you were in the church, did you <clears throat> did you hear much of a Jesus message or a story about grace and works? Did no. you Grace? No. Grace, yeah. I never um I it was all I mean they they the the ones who got up and did the talks, it was all sweet and nice. I, I don't remember many men getting up. I remember mostly women and they were just sweet Sweet Almost, stories. Yeah, and stories. Stuff. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't like like the message from, like out of a scripture, you know. It was just, oh, no. it was yeah. just a discussion that somebody had of something that happened to yeah. them and how their belief strong, uh, got stronger in, in the church. and Faith promoting stories and stuff, mm -hmm. yeah. That's so interesting, isn't it? Um, so now you've, did you keep going to your church then, the one you'd been yeah, going to before? Yeah, I went back. And, mm -hmm. and is that how you, how long did that continue? Where was this at? Was well, this still in California? Still in then? California, yeah. Okay. Still out in Chatsworth okay. for years. Um, yeah, I went to church. And then what happens in, in your life and so on after that? Well, when I was 22, 20, um, I kind of backslid for a while. Um, <laughs> I hung out with some people at work and for about seven years I didn't walk God with a godly <laughs> path <laughs> and uh, got into some bad stuff and it was really pretty bad. So It happens. Huh? Yeah. yeah, but I never really let go of God. In fact, I never even told people I was a Christian because of my behavior. I was embarrassed and oh, I didn't really? want to give Christians a bad name so yeah. I didn't even tell people I was Christian. So. Yeah. And then did and God find you again, so to speak, or you found him? So to speak, yeah. <laughs> God allowed the bottom to fall out, the rug to be pulled out from under me, and I just looked at myself and I said, I can't live this way anymore, and I just went back to God full on, and well, how long it was ago kind was of that? a slowly, um, almost 31 years ago. Oh, Almost 31 God. years ago. And so you've been walking with him ever since, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. And so when did you get here to, how long have you been here? Did you A little over 13 years. 13 years, I may have said that, I think. And uh, what brought you here? Divorce. Oh. My mom and dad had um, moved here to retire. And um, when my husband divorced me, I had to get my boys away from him. Oh. And um, my, the best thing was to move here. Oh. It was too expensive in California. We were living up in Victorville at that time oh, yeah. in the high desert. Right. And uh, uh, there there was one town called Phelan, and it was kind of nearby, and we wanted to move there, but it was like the meth capital of oh, the area, so we didn't want to. So we just moved yeah. here, and it was interesting. And you started going to Calvary Chapel? Did you start I started going there? to Calvary Chapel about five years ago. Did I went you? to another church here in town yeah. um, that was similar to the church I went to in California oh, for a okay. long time. Have you enjoyed Calvary Chapel? I do. I do. Yeah. I love... have heard such wonderful things about Rick, and everything that's going on there and and you're involved in some some outreach programs we were talking about some to someone else and just kind of how Mormons think that Christians uh, once they become Christian all they have to do is believe and then they don't have to do anything else and of course they don't have to do anything else mm -hmm. but they want to mm -hmm. and uh, they don't you know think they Mormons think they get our Sundays off and yeah, <laughs> we get no. a raise in pay a 10 percent increase <laughs> and, and we can just kind of you know eat drink and be merry and all that that's just not true is it <clears throat> no I still tithe um, well, of but course, it's but because I want to you're a cheerful giver mm -hmm. and it, uh, it yeah. doesn't even need to be called a tithe right, right. it's just uh, right. whatever you're giving. able to do and know. I um, what else I'm, are you working with though I'm on the worship team are you? Um, at well, you Calvary. mentioned music. Uh, do you mm -hmm. sing? I sing. Oh, mm -hmm. wonderful. Harmony. Yeah. Um, I learned a new word, harmonist. Um, harmonist? I, harmonist. You're I never harmonist. heard of that before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes sense. And uh, so I'm involved on 
Sundays and Wednesdays at our church. Um, we have uh, two teams and we flip flop um, days that we, singing we sing and stuff. Oh, that's wonderful. And then we do two outreaches uh, every year. We do an Easter sunrise service at Tuacon Amphitheater, yeah. which is just stunning. We have two services. And people are welcome <coughs> to that, right? Oh, there's no oh charge, yeah, there's right? no charge. It's free. It's beautiful now, is it there. sunrise? So it's you a, need to be there early? It starts at 8. Uh -uh. And so we have 8, eight o'clock and 11 o'clock. They have child oh, care on, on services. The sunrise mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. I think we might slip down here and you should for Easter for that. That would be wonderful. Yes. And what's the other? <coughs> excuse me. What was the other one you said? The other one is coming up. It's the Christmas Eve the Christmas, service. Christmas. Okay. It's at the Dixie Center, and it's been going also on. Also free. Also free, and it's uh, all it is is it, it's music and scripture, and then Pastor Rick gives a little message, and yeah. then more music, and it's we go home to our families, and it's just fantastic. it's just so uplifting if you. Uh, if you aren't free, if you're free on Christmas Eve, it's a beautiful service. Easter morning and Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And you're also involved in a, a program with the pregnancy. Yes. What's that called and it's, what do you do? I'm a board member um, at Hope Pregnancy Care Center here in and town. These are for young ladies and other it's people? It's for anybody, anybody, anybody has who has a crisis pregnancy. Crisis pregnancy. And um, we help men and women. Um, of course, it's a just deal with details and if they or? well, they do a lot. They um, oh. help with um, they get them pregnancy tests if they need it. Um, they will help with um, pointing them towards life. Of course, that's the ba that's the main goal is oh, that sure. they would choose yeah. life over abortion. Right. If they have questions about um, uh, ab adoption, we yeah. can point them in a way. Um, we also have a group called Pace. And I can't remember what the stands acronym for. stands for, <laughs> but it's for women who have had abortions. And oh. when you've had an abortion, you're very you. There's statistics that show that you are depressed. You get yeah. depressed. And yet and, there is hope in Christ, right? Right. And yeah. Pace is a Bible study um, to that you to go help through. Them get, mm -hmm. get back. And we're I'm involved almost in out that. of time. Can oh, you goodness. believe it? You were so worried about time <laughs> and everything, and we're just about out. Do you have a message? I mean, uh, just the hope and joy of your journey and and the freedom you feel. Can you imagine if you'd have been these many years in Mormonism? And I, I, the the one thing that I wish that all Mormons knew was that the Bible was true. It was trustworthy and, and it, true. It, it is God speaking to us. Um, I knew it when I was young, and I knew it even more so when I, after I got baptized, it just kind of just cemented it. it in my brain that this was truth. Yeah, and I just, fantastic. that's my prayer all the time for Mormons, that uh, they would learn the Bible is true. That's yeah. truly word of God. Yeah, I do think it's one of the worst things that Joseph Smith ever did. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for joining us, and uh, we appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files. See ya.